Hey guys, how you doing? Today we're talking Gen 2 S550 Naturally Aspirated Manual Combos. So let's say you bought yourself a Gen 2 Mustang. In my opinion, the king daddy of all Mustang platforms in terms of Coyote. The reason I say that is because I think the platform was centered around racing. If you saw how the platform was introduced by Ford, they introduced it as 12, 11, and 10 second combinations that are able to be achieved with the S550 chassis, EcoBoost, GT, and a supercharged GT. But for NA purposes, we'll, we'll keep it at uh, NA manual S550 combinations. So let's talk about 12s, let's get right into it. 12s from the factory are easily attainable. You literally need to just know how to drive. The stock tune, stock limiter of 6850, stock transmission, and maybe not really a drag radial or a slick, but a slightly stickier tire than stock, should be able to get you 1290s at 107, 108, or something like that. It shouldn't be that much of an issue. So 12s is not that difficult to achieve in an S550. Now let's jump to 11s. Now this is where you're gonna need horsepower. If you can cut a 1.8 or 1.9 60 foot time, keep it out of the 2 all range, you should be able to get into the 11s with very minor modifications. You should be able to get into the 11s with a drag radial while you slip the clutch. You should be able to do it with the factory clutch, believe it or not, but you're gonna need a tune because we need to rev this car past 7200 RPMs. The factory rev limiter is 6850. So we need to rev this car 72, 73, 7400 RPM so that when it lands, it lands right at the meat of the torque. So a tune, absolutely need a tune. And while you're in there, do you wanna just get an E85 tune? Sure, because Gen 2 Mustangs do not require an injector in order for you to run E85. All you need to do is say, I want an E85 tune. And on the stock intake manifold, you should be able to run E85 no problem with the stock injector. Now, when it comes to the axles and the drive shaft, I still think you can go 11.99 with factory stuff and a drag radio and a sticky tire. And I think you could, you could get away with stock exhaust, but let's get there easier and let's throw some free flowing exhaust in the combo, similar as S197. So, tune, sticky tire, and an E85 tune and shifting above 7,400 RPMs, which the aftermarket tune will allow you to make. Now, the cold air is up to you. In my opinion, you can do it with the factory cold air, but if you're gonna buy any aftermarket cold air on your S550 Mustang, for the love of God, just buy a PMAS Fenderwell and you'll never have to buy any other intake again. You can play the intake roulette while you're constantly going this one, that one, this one, that one. At the end of the day, tuners like the intake that has the best data, regardless of what the internet says. So the PMAS Fenderwell intake by far outperforms not, not only in data, but it is ridiculously repeatable and it's 120 millimeter, whereas the stock cold air intake is barely 85 or 90 millimeters. So you already have a 30% larger intake I don't think the engine will ever need that big of an intake because supercharged applications have 120 millimeter intakes. So the cold air intake is completely up to you. So again, let's recap 11s. Cold air intake is optional, E85 tune, and a sticky tire and free flowing exhaust. You're gonna have to do it. And again, on Gen 2, you do not have to buy an injector to run E85. You can do it on the stock injector with the stock intake manifold. Now let's go into the tens. Can you go tens with stock cams and a high revving manifold? Yeah, but I don't think you'll be able to do it with the stock intake manifold. Now, some people might refute that. I am, I am building this as if the car weighs close to factory weight. If you wanna start gutting the car, absolutely. You can absolutely run close to 10 seconds with a stock manifold, 373s, a good clutch, yada, yada, yada. But I'm not one of these guys that guts cars too heavily, so I'm building it as if you were building this car as if it was your only car. And the last thing you wanna do is drive on a milk crate to your job every morning. So let's keep it somewhat factory weight. To get into the 10s in somewhat factory trim, you're gonna need a decent amount of work. Now you can skip right to Cobra Jet if you want, but I don't think it's necessary. So 
to go 10.99 on a naturally aspirated S550, I think requires way more suspension work and a better 60 foot than power per se. So in 2015, they introduced the IRS, the independent rear suspension, which was awesome if you want to turn and drive and have great comfort, but was not that great if you want to get the best 60 foot times possible. I've always said that you can build an S197 NA cheaper and to go quicker than an S550 because you're going to have to upgrade almost everything back there. You're going to have to call your favorite suspension company and say, I want everything you got for this rear end from cradle lockouts, bushing supports, stop the hop kits, end links, toe links, you name it. You're going to need everything back there to keep the IRS from deflecting or sliding independently of the body. There is some pretty wishy-washy bushings back there. And if you've ever seen an S550 take off sometimes, there is a lot of wheel hop that happens and the car tends to be darty. That's why these cars were made fun of, or the owners are made fun of, when they go to a Cars and Coffee and leave and do a one-two shift and it darts all over the place. The factory alignment sucks, the factory bushings aren't that great. So you need to absolutely shore up the rear end to make it as stiff as possible for drag racing purposes. Again, many aftermarket companies can make that happen. I'm not gonna come here to tell you what exactly to get, but a good place to start is Steeda. I'm gonna be honest with you, the fastest and quickest cars out there Run Steeda stuff. Literally, the Stop the Hop kit is a great entry level kit to get to keep wheel hop at bay. So, you wanna go 10? Stop the Hop kit. You also need axles, that's right, from DSS or G-Force. Those are gonna run you like 1,500 bucks or so. So understand, now you're gonna have to spend big boy money just to make the rear end as good as an S197 solid rear axle. Yeah, it sucks, but that's the world we live in. So you need axles. You also need a drive shaft, a one-piece drive shaft because the two-piece drive shaft is not going to cut it. It's going to pretzel and it's not going to be a good time and you're going to need a very sticky tire, a bias ply tire. Again, we're talking stick shift stuff here. So you need a bias ply tire, forget the drag radio. We are trying to launch this car aggressively over 6,000 RPMs or at least over 5,000 RPMs. So you need a bias ply tire to take up some of that shock and you need the axles and the drive shaft so it doesn't explode while it does so. Going forward in the drive line, clutch. You're gonna need a clutch. McLeod RST for a Fuse or a Mantic Dual for a aggressive but not McLeod RXT aggressive. McLeod RXT is a non-starter in my opinion. So Mantic Dual or a RST from McLeod in my opinion are the go-to clutches. For power, you're gonna need E85 tune and free flown exhaust that you had from when you went 11s. Now we're gonna need a higher revving manifold. Now, if you don't want to go Cobra Jet, that's fine. You can go 2018 Mustang Manifold. That's right. The 2018 Mustang Manifold is a great improvement over the Gen 2 Manifold. The stock rev limiter on a 2018, 2018 Mustang is over 7,300 RPMs. So you know this Manifold can flow at higher RPMs and you need to live in the higher RPM ranges to make this S550 run 10s NA. So, 2018 Mustang Manifold or a Boss Intake Manifold should allow you to rev it higher and have the power band move to the right a little bit and you should be able to basically trap a higher mile an hour than the stock manifold will allow. Now you're going to need a 60 foot in the 1.7 to 1.6 range. So whatever you need to do to make that happen, again, it's going to be over, I would say $4,000 by the time you get the clutch, drive shaft, axles, and complete rear suspension totally shored up, not including the cost of the tires. And if you want to buy a shifter, all that, remember, it's going to get expensive the moment you want to go tens, naturally aspirated in an S550 Mustang. Now, a lot of you would say, why don't you just go Cobra Jet right off the bat? You can't, but in my opinion, you shouldn't get a Cobra Jet intake manifold unless you're going to couple it with cams. Now this goes with every generation Coyote. In my opinion, the Cobra Jet intake manifold loves to live at close to 8,000 RPMs, but your cams kind of are done at like 71, 7,200. You can rev them higher if you want, depending on the manifold configuration and power adder, but in naturally aspirated form, I think at about 7,200, they're done. So not only do you need cams to complement the intake manifold, now you're gonna need a tune that allows you to rev to 8,200, 8,300 RPMs. 
And that's where I think the nine second zone comes in. I think you can go tens with the boss intake, clutch, drive shaft, axle, suspension, E85 free flow and exhaust. If you launch it at 6,000 RPMs, hopefully everything stays together and the car should run a 1099 at let's say 124 or 123 or something like that, maybe 122 if you 60 foot in the 16s. But nines, completely different animal because from 1099 to 999, now we gotta start doing some extreme stuff. Nines in an S550 NA Mustang require a lot of work, especially getting the car lighter. That's just gonna have to happen. You're gonna have to put two Kirkies in it, get the rear seats out of it, really lightweight wheels. I'm saying something like a Bellac or something that is exotic and light, or if you wanna go the cheap route, VMSs, race stars, things of that nature, SVEs, but I want you to have the lightest wheel possible. I love Weld S77Bs, the S71s that I had in my red car were awesome. The RTSs are great wheels. They look great and they're super light. So get the car light. Now a lot of you guys can go the lightweight brake route. There's a lot of bare brakes, aerospace, TBM, you name it. But we're gonna have to spend a lot of money to get this car extremely light. Now I'm saying to get an S550 to a 32 or 3300 race weight is gonna be very expensive. Not impossible, but extremely expensive. But again, you're looking to go nines. So we're not playing around here. Let's get after it, okay? Cobra Jet intake manifold. First thing you gotta get is a Cobra Jet intake manifold and comp cam stage three cams. These cars, have a mid-lock phaser, so the cams don't need limiters. So you can just shove in a, a big set of Comp Camp Stage 3 and A cams, and you'll hear that cam mentioned a lot in this S550 Gen 2 build series because that cam does it all. So Stage 3 Comp Cams, Cobra Jet Intake Manifold. In my opinion, you don't need a monoblade. The monoblade, in my opinion, is so unreliable and it fail safe so much that I don't think it's worth it I have tuned cars that have made 510 or so rear wheel horsepower with a Cobra Jet 65 millimeter throttle body from Ford Racing. Now you can get the TJ69 from BMP, TJ67, you can get a monoblade, but in my opinion, you don't need anything more than a Cobra Jet 65 millimeter, but that's up to you whether you wanna get that or not. And again, the cold air is gonna be a PMAS 120 millimeter Cobra Jet style cold air. E85 or a very exotic fuel. And again, you're gonna need a bigger injector. The LU47 should be adequate, but when you have a Cobra Jet, cams, and ethanol on a cool day, I would at least get a boosted pump or a fuel system, believe it or not. You don't wanna play around with fuel. Fuel is the lifeblood of the engine. So you're definitely gonna to want to make sure you have plenty of fuel system especially if you're gonna run an exotic fuel. A lot of people out there are running a very exotic fuel like M5, which has nitro in it, basically, like nitromethane. It's, it's, a, it's a heavy concentration of ethanol, race gas, and nitro. So when you see NA cars running really fast times, NA, they're not doing it on pump E85. They're doing it on a very aggressive fuel like M5. I don't urge you to do that because I don't think it's necessary to run nines. I've seen many people, especially a couple of our customers in Australia, that have been nines manual, S550, but their cars were very light. So getting the car extremely light should allow you to drive a 500 rear row horsepower car that weighs about 3,300 pounds into the low, low tens or on a very cool day high nines. Again, it's going to take a Cobra Jet, cams, maybe some head porting, a good cold air intake like the PMAS, maybe an exotic fuel, something with nitro in it. I wish we still had that purple FTW stuff because that stuff was phenomenal. I can't believe they don't make that stuff anymore, but that stuff, in my opinion, was so insanely good, I can't believe no one has tried to copy that formula to run nines and eight. So, uh, at the, I, w I don't want to ramble on and on, but in an NA form, let's just whittle it down to this. You 12s from the factory, 11s, cold air and a tune, or just cold air and a tune and free flowing exhaust if you want. That should run 11s, no problems with a sticky tire. 
Want to get into the tens? Well, you're going to have to get a higher revving manifold. You're going to have to get E85. You're going to have to get all the suspension, cradle lockouts, uh, stop the hop kits, axles, drive shaft, and a clutch. McLeod RST or a Mantic Dual is the best uh, clutch to go to, in my opinion. Now we're going to try to go nines. Well, you're going to need a Cobra Jet, ComCam NA Stage 3s. You're going to need a very exotic fuel or a very lightweight car on top of all the other suspension mods and maybe a 1,000cc injector, a fuel system, or a booster pump to make sure that that extra power that you're making is accounted for in the fuel system. And I think you can make 500 to 520 rear wheel horsepower pretty easily. And as long as that's in a light car that can 60 foot with a good bias ply 28, 11 by 17 Hoosier Quick Time Pro, I think you might be able to get into the nines, but this is the hardcore racer we're talking about here. So hopefully this gave you a very general understanding of what it takes to make an S550 Gen 2 King Daddy car. In my opinion, it is the best platform to build off of by far to make it go 11s, 10s, and 9s naturally aspirated. Thanks for listening, guys. Stay tuned for the 6R80 version of Gen 2 in a little bit. Have a good one, guys.